There's a lot of talk about omega-3 essential fatty acids. And most of what we hear is really that they're important, that we can't make them because our bodies can't. And we have to consume them from something that we eat. And the usual ways we get them are from fish or from flaxseed oil or other seeds and nuts. Now, there's been a study that looks at the association between essential fatty acids and breast cancer. And the associations that we make look very promising and suggest that that's exactly what we need to do to try and, and protect against getting uh, breast cancer. But we've been stuck with associations, not with, with clinical trials that have said this with certainty. Now, we have new information that was published by the Canadians. It was published in the Journal of Nutritional Biochemistry in February 2013. And what they did was very clever. They looked at what are called transgenic mice. What does that mean? It means that we change the genetic uh, makeup of a mouse so that it, one, is at high risk for developing breast cancer, and two, that it can make its own essential uh, omega-3 fatty acids, something we haven't really been able to study before because uh, it takes a long time in humans because our lifespan is long. That of a mouse is just a matter of weeks to months. And what they found in this study is that those mice that had the uh, high genetic uh, oper or high genetic risk for developing breast cancer indeed did, just as it was predicted. In those mice, however, that were also given the gene to make omega-3 essential fatty acids, the risk of breast cancer went way down. So now for the first time, we have evidence that's clear that shows that if essential fatty acids are present, that we have a much lower risk of developing breast cancer. The number that came out was about 30% less uh, breast cancer in those mice that had the gene transloc or the gene that was put in for breast cancer and the gene put in for the essential fatty acids than just those mice that had the gene for breast cancer. The tumors are also about 30% smaller. So we're looking at some pretty significant statistics here. Previous studies, as I said, have only shown associations and epidemiological studies are not what most doctors are looking for uh, unless there's no other way to get information because we'd like to try and do things uh, that are based in solid science. A previous study suggests the same thing. There was a study done in 2007 sponsored by the National Institutes of Health that was, shown at, that was presented at the ASCO conference. That's the American Society of Clinical Oncology. That was in the year 2007. And what they found in this University of Michigan study is that, that people who were given flaxseed oil okay, had a lower rate of spread of cancer and a lower rate at which the cancers grew. This was breaking news that was really the highlight of the conference. And that's really impressive when you're looking at, at nutrition because in general, physicians are not really that educated when it comes to nutrition and they're kind of biased against it and in favor of using pharmaceutical drugs instead. What they found is that the flaxseed oil and the cancer cells uh, responded to uh, the lignans that were in the flaxseed oil. And the lignans stop the growth of blood vessels, new blood vessels, which are required for cancer to grow. It's called angiogenesis, and that was lowered. It also showed that there was less in the way of spread uh, of the cancer. It was anti-mitotic. So what we have here is some interesting information that's new and for the first time shows in a clinical model, the mouse, that, the, that essential fatty acids are very highly, uh, in the mouse for sure, shows a clear uh, protection against getting breast cancer if we take in those essential fatty acids. And now the next step, of course, is in people, but what's to lose by, by consuming essential fatty acids on a regular basis? The USDA has done three studies on tens of thousands of people that show that we have a massive uh, malnutrition when it comes to essential fatty acids and that approximately 95% of the population could use more in that, in that domain. And we know that essential fatty acids are very important as anticoagulants to control heart rhythm disturbances. They waterproof the skin. They make up a large percentage of, of, our, uh, of our brains and of our hearts. And they have innumerable other effects that are all healthy for us. 
So what I'm suggesting is that we take this information seriously and correct that deficiency that we have in essential fatty acids by consuming things like flaxseed oil or flaxseed oil or a little bit of uh, fish oil with evening primrose oil or something of that nature so that we get a good balance of omega-3 and omega-6s, reduce our risk for cancer, and live a healthy uh, a life that's going to give us better health.